How's it going? Thought I'd do a bit of a clip today on Queensland fruit fly. We were down at the aquaponics earlier before having a bit of a look around and taking out a few plants to make space and I was checking the capsicums, the bull's horn capsicums and I found within one of these little bags here a fruit fly. So I've sealed off the bag and I thought I'd open him up and give you a bit of a look at him, see what he looks like, help you identify them little fellas. Um, now he seems to have disappeared. Aha! I have found him. He is trapped. We also have a bag here with a couple of the um, grubs where they're pupating in their little cocoons. I found this. Um, I found them sitting in the bag of a rotten capsicum we picked a while back. So I've saved them and been waiting for them to hatch so I could show you what they look like. But I've found one in here, so I'll bring you in closer and we'll have a little bit of a look. So I'm going to try and open up this bag and get this fly out. Um, when I sealed the bag, you can actually see here what's happened. Um, they have a two tags on these bags and you wrap them around the stem and you tie them up. I left a little bit of an opening here and the um, clever little feather fella <laughs> decided to crawl through there to get to the fruit. So, so I'll try and get this guy out without him escaping. So here we go here, I've got him by one of his wings him by his legs. So there we go. Um, that's what they look like. They're a tannish brown and they've got bright yellow little dots on them. So I don't know how well this is um, showing up in the camera. So what they do with the actual fruit themselves is they come along and they sting it. There's a mark there. It looks like another mark up the top there and there's also some blemishes down the bottom there. So what I'm going to do with this one is open him up and see if we can find any maggots inside. First I will very quickly dispatch this little fella here though. I also have a couple of photos of maggots as they're consuming the flesh of these guys. They're laid in just underneath the skin then what they do is they eat the flesh from between the skin and the inside and they make little tunnels. They're very hard to actually find and get out. So once they infect the fruit, this one here would be all right to cut up and use right now just um, cut out the infected bits if there's any maggots in there so still fine fruit to use I just prefer them red so I'll just cut this guy open and see if I can find any maggots to show you so we'll cut around the uh, mark the sting first these guys might be a little bit too tiny to see at the moment but you can start to see the damage they're doing eating it from the inside out um, but other than that this capsicum here um, looks to be fine. All we need to do is just chop off the bottom. And that is perfectly edible and won't go to waste. And to prove so, I'll eat some now. So, there's no point wasting the food, as far as I can see. You might as well save as much as you can and eat it. These bits here can go straight into the worm farm or the chookies and I'll take care of them. I pickled up two jars worth of this using a recipe Dale Calder posted so I can't see the point in letting it go to waste. Right now we'll have a look at these little um, cocoons in here just to show you what they look like. I don't think you'd actually see these in the wild they tend to fall with the fruit and rot on the ground um, but they're interesting to look at anyway so right yeah there's actually quite a few there's one two three four five six in here so I'll just tip them out onto my hand. So that's what these guys look like. They haven't hatched yet. They're the little pupa. You normally wouldn't see these guys. Um, they'd fall with the fruit and just um, pupate in the ground and they would emerge as fruit fly to um, wreak havoc on your crops. So I'll destroy these guys in a minute. So what, what we're doing to combat them. As you can see, <laughs> these bags don't always work. They're not foolproof. The insect house behind me here seems to be working fine so far. We have some chilies up the far end that were struck really badly last year. Not a single um, strike on any of the chili as of yet. I was told by someone that fruit fly tend to come in horizontally or down from above. They won't crawl around things and fly underneath. I've actually visited a place where um, Steve and Adie have actually put fruit fly netting over the top of their um, stone fruit tree and they haven't had any strike as of yet um, from the last time I saw there and they've got probably half-sized fruit now I think it was a peach tree 
So it appears to be working and that was what was recommended to them by a um, fruit tree grower, uh, by a fruit grower. So Sarah Trap, um, they're the little traps that I've showed you before. Um, I'm just running on, the, on a bit of a theory here that the capsicum fruit, when you smell the actual flesh of the capsicum, it does put out a scent, or pepper for you North Americans. Um, it actually does give out a strong scent. So what I'm thinking is the capsicum actually overrides the scent of the um, Sarah fruit trap, the lure, the bait. Um, so yeah, they're pretty much all blowing the capsicums because the mango is not a meter and a half away. We haven't had any fruit fly, f fruit fly strike on them yet and there's two Sarah traps hanging there. Um, I was at a seed swap last night and a gentleman there, Scott, recommended another bait. So I'm going to look that one up. It's an eco lure. Um, you paint it onto a surface, the fruit fly come, um, they partake of the sweet goodness and actually just they, they drop dead straight away. I'm fairly sure, I'm going to have to look up on that one, but I'm fairly sure that's an organic one. I'll post a link in the description below to the product name, uh, both of them, the Cerro Trap and the other Eco Lure. So yeah, um, it's a bit of a battle here. I have, as you can see just behind me here, I'm growing a beefsteak tomato in there, in the house as well. I also have some determinant um, KY1 bush deter um, determinant tomatoes that I've got seedlings for and a black Russian I got a seedling from and then uh, from an Annette McFarlane uh, talk. Got the stutters today, I need more coffee I think. Um, so I've got to find somewhere for them. I've got another IBC to cut up so I'm thinking about making an IBC, another garden bed, two of them because you get two per IBC and having tomatoes in there and rigging up some sort of a cage over the top with some more fly netting or it's actually just insect netting but it seems to be keeping the fruit fly out so i'll get stuck into that sometime in the near future it's on the list of jobbies somewhere and no doubt you'll probably see that in a couple of walk around clips i might actually do one on the um, fruit fly proofing of those boxes so all those beds Another idea I'm interested in is making up some insect bags just out of this stuff itself. Just sewing up large bags, probably about oh, two foot across by about three foot long, so probably about 60 centimetres or 600 mil by 1,000 mil, uh, making up some large bags so they can actually go over whole branches of tomatoes. So I might try growing some tomatoes and capsicums out just in the garden open and slipping those bags over the top branches or maybe a whole plant if I get small capsicums and see how we go with that. So. Um, there are other ways, you don't have to build a whole insect house to try and combat these guys but as it was already up for the um, cabbage butterflies for our winter crops we figured we might as well leave it there and give it a whirl for these guys. So that's pretty much all it I suppose. Any comments, questions, suggestions drop them in the comments box below and I'll get back to you. I just thought while I had the little cocoons and I trapped a fruit fly in the bag I might as well show you today so have a good one and take it easy. Catch ya. So, fruit fly, pain in the butt. Um...